Pompeo became the first superior general. In the early 19th century, I felt that my missionary brothers in the Far East needed the help of nuns. So I persuaded Mother de Faldus, superior of the Dames de Saint-Moir, to send out five sisters to Malaya. They were also known as the Sisters of the Holy Infant Jesus. The long and comfortable journey aboard the frigate La Julie took its toll. Poor Mother St. Paulin, she fell ill, and after three months suffering, she died. Finally, only two sisters arrived to work in Penang. I was relieved when a second contingent was sent out. Thank God their leader was the gifted and very special Reverend Mother St. Mathilde. Her assistants were Sister St. Damien, Sister St. Gregory, and a young English novice. In October 1852, they reached Penang. They set up a mission there and left it under the control of Sister St. Damien. Then, Mother St. Mathilde, with Sister St. Apollinaire, Sister St. Gayton, were asked to come down to Singapore to establish a new mission here. I went down to the harbour to meet the sisters. The Hoogly was anchored at the waterfront. I looked anxiously for the sisters and saw them waiting patiently, observing the busy waterfront crowd. people gaped at the nuns in astonishment. They had never seen such a strange sight. Even the port workers seemed to dance with excitement.
people and greeted them warmly. My companions and I then drove them off immediately to the Cathedral of the Good Shepherd, which was beautifully decorated with flowers. They were honored with a grand mass and the congregation singing the Tadium. for the tired and hungry sisters who settled in Caldwell House. They made no comment. However, I recall in her letter to Paris, Mother St. Mathilde writing with her typical dry humour. Hymns, flowers and complimentary speeches are all very fine, no doubt, but not very filling. Mother St. Mathilde and her companions got down to work with lightning speed. paying pupils, for the poor, and for orphans. Later, many of the orphans helped by taking in sewing and needlework. The money was needed to meet the expenses of running the convent. Reverend Mother and the sisters had a hard time winning over the officials and gaining the confidence of the people. In the end, their reputation for goodness and charity attracted people. We had two types of students in the beginning. There were 14 full-paying pupils from the European community. from poorer semi-educated families whose fathers were European and mothers were Malay, Chinese, Siamese or Indian. Homeless young girls and orphans were brought in by helpful laymen and they were allowed to join classes for some form of education.
this small group of fee-paying European pupils was fairly easy to manage, but the larger number of poorer Eurasians presented severe discipline problems. They appeared in school dressed in printed muslin frocks, edged with ragged lace and large hats decorated with clumps of faded flowers or feathers. Their mothers, being uneducated Asian women, overlooked the necessity of equipping their daughters with either shoes, stockings, or underwear. These girls stubbornly resisted the efforts of the European nuns to turn them into Western-educated, demure young ladies. beginning to tell on the poor nuns. Their full black robes were most unsuitable for the hot tropical climate. Money was short. There were more mouths to feed and more sisters were needed to carry out the growing work of the community. Oh yes, there were moments of discouragement.
little girls decided to join the fold. But there was no entry more dramatic than that of Miss Bruna, the future Sister St. Joseph. Let me tell you about her. Miss Bruna came from a wealthy American family who were fanatically Protestant. They refused to accept her conversion to the Catholic faith. She fell seriously ill under the strain and was sent for a holiday with her brother and his wife in Hong Kong. She became well known there for her charitable work with the poor. She wanted to join the religious order, so the bishop recommended that she join the mission in Singapore. On her first meeting with Mother St. Mathilde, Miss Bruna appeared ill at ease, and on being brought into the chapel, she turned ghastly pale. Only years later did she explain. saw the chapel, exact in every detail to the one seen in my dream. were most amusing to the sisters. She was completely ignorant of religious life and innocently asked Reverend Mother for servants to sweep her room and make her bed, and she never heeded the bell. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord has done marvels for me. Holy is His name. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. He looks on His servant and then nothing else. And small all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy His name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear Him. However, Miss Bruna settled in as Sister St. Joseph and later was appointed mistress of novices. Her dream came true 25 years later, when she was laid to rest in her coffin 
in front of the main altar of the convent chapel. Sister St. Joseph worked diligently as mistress of novices and trained her little group of postulants in their duties. I remember a touching scene when these young ladies received their orders in the chapel. presented by officialdom and superstition were overcome by prayer and sacrifice. Conditions of life in Singapore were still very backward. Prostitution was common. Many young girls from China were smuggled out in boats to be sold to houses of vice in the city. Mother St. Mathilde was informed of this and often set out to rescue them.
overtooking these girls who became very good Christians and led others into the faith. The sisters extended their love and concern to unwanted babies as well. Very often, when the convent gates were opened at dawn, a box or basket containing a wailing infant was found, left by some mysterious donor. <laughs> to respect and trust the work of the sisters. Many young men, for instance, came to the convent to look for a suitable wife. The young girls in the care of the good sisters had been trained in good behavior and housecraft, typical scene which recurred throughout the years. Reverend Mother would brief the young suitor beforehand. You are to look carefully at the young ladies who pass through the room and then you can make your choice. the room. A second followed, this time a pretty Eurasian. a big buxom chiming of pleasant good-humoured appearing. When the parade was over, the sister asked, which of the girls do you favour? The third girl will make the best wife. It is she I prefer. The fortunate orphan was sent for. She came in shyly, hanging her head. Then she raised her eyes to her admirer. Reverend Mother said to her simply, See this Chinese young man here? He wants to marry you. Would you like him as a husband? She replied timidly. If Reverend Mother wishes it. Reverend Mother gave the husband this parting advice. Love your wife. She is our child. And if you are not kind to her, we shall take her back. Since they did not return, we may conclude that they lived happily ever after. The Second World War broke out. 1940 to 1945 were troubled years. Japanese oppression was seen everywhere. Death left its mark on every doorstep. And many homes were destroyed by the bombs. Women and 
children took shelter in the convent. Yet even this sanctuary became a target for Japanese bombs. Some of the sisters and orphans left Singapore to seek refuge in Bahá'u. The other nuns remained in the convent to give help wherever they could. of the war, the good nuns quickly re-established normal life in the convent. I saw many changes taking place over the following years. A blue tunic and white blouse became the uniform of all convent girls. There were changes for the nuns too. The full black habit was replaced by a black habit and white headdress. Later, the mother house in France agreed that a full white habit was more suitable for nuns in tropical regions. To meet with the demands of modern life today, skirts have been shortened and the peaked coif has been replaced by a scarf-like head covering. The Hotel Van Wyck, facing Stanford Canal, was previously used to house the Chinese convent pupils and was called St. Nicholas Girls' School. The building was later demolished and a modern three-storied building replaced it. St. Nicholas moved over to occupy the old convent building and the present convent school took over the new site. Today, the number of nuns coming from Ireland has decreased. 
If there are insufficient local sisters to carry on the work, the boarding section, the orphanage and the crash has been closed down. today. They include children of all races and creeds. The work of Mother St. Marcel was carried out by Mother St. Gayton, Mother St. Homeline, Mother St. Lutgard and Mother St. James, who took charge of the convent till 1942. In later years, other nuns, many familiar to you present, took on this selfless task. Here is Mother St. Charles, who ran the convent during the war years. From 1943 to 1948, she now resides at the Charas convent in Kiel. She was succeeded by the capable and efficient Mother St. John, 1948 to 1954. She continued service in Australia after retiring and has finally settled in Ireland. Mother Damien, warm, affectionate, with a beautiful singing voice, replaced her from 1961 to 1966. She continued her generous service in counselling work till August 1983 and now intends settling in Australia. Lively and talented Sister Dolores took over from 1967 to 1974. She now runs classes in speech and drama. She's living at Marsha Road in Carton. Sister Elizabeth gave selfless and devoted concern to the school from 1975 to 1982. She's now settled in Ireland, doing a course in pastoral work. And now, let me introduce someone new to many of you, but one that I hope will remain with us for the many new and challenging years ahead. Sister Anne, her courage, spirit and calm determination will be needed to carry the ideals and aspirations of CHIJ Victoria Street to CHIJ Tuapayo. I shall be with you. God bless you one and all. Adieu.